Mrs. Lane. What do you want to do tonight? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Jesus said, do you have any questions? And I said, I have a million questions. And so I asked him everything that I could think of to ask. And he answered everything patiently and clearly and simply, including, um, I don't know whether we went to places or he just created the environment of things that I asked about around us. I, I can't tell whether we went there, but it was all very real and um uh, then when I couldn't think of anything more to ask him, I said I wanted to go to heaven, and he told me that I had to come back to this world and that it wasn't my time to go to heaven. And so I had a big argument with him, trying to persuade me. <laughs> I, I was trying to persuade him to let me. Argue, argue with Jesus. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Um, I argued really, really <laughs> forcefully. And he, asked, he, he counted my arguments with very kind, patient, um, better arguments that defeated my arguments. And uh, always, um, always loving me, always laughing, always um, delightful. I like to think of Jesus as my best friend, because I, I, there's nobody in the world that's as good a friend as he is. And uh, when I couldn't win my argument about going to heaven, um, I agreed to come back to the world. And with that, um, when I agreed, I was just back in the body, in the bed, in the pain. And immediately when I returned, the nurse had been in the room a little earlier, came back to the room and said, a doctor has now arrived at the hospital and you're going to have a surgery. That was at 9 o'clock, and I had the surgery at 10 o'clock. Um, I'm not religious at all, okay? But for some reason, I have a spiritual connection with Jesus. And... I don't know how I know, but I just know, like I know that he exists. Yeah. Um, so what is the purpose of life? Why are we here, Howard? Um, it's really pretty simple. Um, I had a friend who sent me, he made a bumper sticker for me. And um, I like this so much I have it on the window. I'm looking at it right now instead of putting it on the car and, and the sticker says, life is a classroom, love is the lesson. And I think that's a really qu cute way to say it. We, we are given this life experience to learn how to love. And we either um, choose to learn how to love or we choose to not learn how to love. And that's, what, that's why we're here. And if we um, become loving, then we get to graduate to the next stage of our spiritual development, um, moving on to heaven and other great adventures and spiritual development. And if we don't, if we choose not to love, um, we get demoted to a place where we reap what we sowed in life. It's not punishment. It's just um, it's what we all we all really secretly wanted absent of all the good things that are in this world. Right. So what did it feel like to be in the presence of Jesus? I guess if you had to sum it up, how would you describe that feeling? Um, you know, I've, I've, I've had almost 30 years to think about that. And I think about it a lot. And I don't have any words. Um, Jesus is... You know, the interesting thing is he doesn't just love us. He likes us. The, the, fact, <laughs> the fact of the matter is he made us. We were made by him. He made our, he, he designed our noses, our eyes, our hair, our arms, our, our legs. And even more importantly, he even designed the way that we think. Some of us are brighter and some of us are duller. Some of us, um, you know, creative. Some of us are uh, gifted in different ways. And, and those, and that, and that is all his doing. He likes his handiwork. He likes it a lot. And all as he wants for his handiwork, us, is to be the very best that we can be. And so he doesn't want us to do stupid things like poison ourselves. He doesn't want us to go around hurting each other. You know, he wants us to um, love and support and have the most full, wonderful, joyful life um, that we possibly can have. And he he really wants us to be um, happy and to enjoy this world and to um, um, love and support each other. And 
that that's the whole plan. That's why he made us, and we aren't doing it. And and, and, and even us who um, aspire to do it because of the condi- the conditions of the world have a lot of difficult. It's really hard to be a happy, joyful, loving, supportive person in this world because the world is um, um, not really very um, receptive to that. Right. Right. Well, you know, um, that's why we have you, our creators. You know, I mean, that was our goal to to bring peace and happiness to as many people as possible. So, OK, um, what was the purpose of Jesus coming to Earth? I mean, like, who was he? Well, God had been connecting with all people everywhere throughout the whole world. Um, there isn't a people in the world that God hasn't tried to connect to, but people don't do a very good job of listening to God. <laughs> um, and then, and then the sad thing is, is that sometimes really do, some people have a really good primary experience of God and then that gets perverted and turned into an institution whose purpose right. is to control other people and to exploit them in different ways, you know, like power trips and money trips and things like that. Um, So there have been many, many people who've had primary experiences of God. Um, Sometimes they've been murdered like Jesus, you know, who, who was um, the singular primary experience of God because he was both fully human and fully had God in him and the reaction of the world to a person who has that um, love and that joy and that truth is uh, a lot of times really hostile because it um, is a threat to the uh, the established dominating forces as Jesus was a threat to the um, dominating forces of Rome and the corrupt uh, leaders of the temple. So, um, Jesus came, the way that I really like to think about it, um, we were homo sapiens, but Jesus came to show us what it could be to be fully human. Right. Fully connected with God, fully connected with one another. Right. And, um, from his um, perspective, because he was also God, he knew that even though his um, experience down here was very short-lived, three years, you know, of of doing his work, um, that it would succeed with the uh, followers that he had. So, from those group, that group of men and women. Um, that message has been um, going out that there there is a better way to be a human being. The the sad thing is is that after two thousand years that message hasn't been um, better received by the world. And it's also too bad that that message has been so often um, uh, misrepresented by institutions that claim to represent him. Okay. So, Howard, what were you told about religion? Does God really care about what religion we practice? Well, I did not ask Jesus about um, war religions. I, when I asked him about religion, um, what I was thinking, because I, I wasn't a religious person at all, I was thinking of, like, Catholic, Lutheran, Methodist, Baptist, you know, Presbyterian, whatever. And uh, Jesus made it really clear to me that those distinctions are not important and one of the ways that he put it was he said that there's good people and bad religions and bad people and good religions and so um, my experience has been denominational differences within Christianity are um, not only the unimportant but often do more harm than good and that I, my experience has been people who love God, no matter what their religion, no matter what their culture, um, 
I have a lot in common with them. Right. And people who love religion, I have very little in common with. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, it, it's really kind of funny because I've been with people. I, I've had the opportunity to travel all over the world. Um, not everywhere, but um, I've been to China and Europe and South America and stuff. And um, I meet people who love God and like you don't even care what religion they are. It's irrelevant because in their love of God, they uh, radiate love and um, I love them and they love me and, and we think alike. And and I believe that their they belong to Jesus every bit as much as I do, whether they know anything about him or not. Right. Uh, I also, like I said before, there's people who profess a strong religion, but I don't find any love in them. Right. And yeah. it's very, very uh, distressing. So basically love is all that matters, really, basically. Yes. Now, I... I went to seminary to become a pastor and I uh, led churches for 22 years and all that. And I, I loved the rituals of the mm -hmm. Protestant church and the Catholic church. I, I love the Christian rituals. I, I, I love the whole thing. My wife and I, um, now that I'm retired, we sing in the choir and um, I can't think of anything more fun than being in a happy little church singing in the choir. I mean, <laughs> it just, um, it's just uh, one of the highlights of, uh, my life and my wife's life. And um, I know that my church is made up of imperfect people, including myself. Um, but we're trying to do the best that we can to, to act in a way that I think would be more pleasing than, to God than the way the world exists outside the church walls. Mm. Okay. Okay, so... What were you shown about human abilities? What powers do we all have? What can we actually do? Well, when I talked to Jesus about the future, he showed me a future a couple hundred years off that people were connected um, to each other telepathically throughout the whole world. Everybody in the world was voluntarily able to communicate with everybody else in the world. And wow. with this ability to connect, they also controlled the weather. So if the weather was always perfect because um, by consensus, people agreed what the weather would be and, yes. and made it happen. People had no anxiety about food because they could also connect with um, the plants. And they, and he showed me how they would, um, sit in front of a plant and grow it like in a few minutes and then consume it. That's crazy. Um, people spent a lot of their, their main focus was in raising children. And Jesus made okay. it um, very clear to me in several different instances that the main job that we have in this world is nurturing children, which is so different than the way that we actually, um, prioritize the raising of children in our world. I mean, like I was a teacher and I'm, you know, and I know that the teaching profession is increasingly under attack and held in low esteem and increasingly um, doesn't pay enough money for like young teachers going into the, that go into the public uh, school system. Don't make enough money to um, live or raise a family. Um, right. And in the future, we will all be giving a great deal of our time to the um, welfare of the children amongst us. And, and children will belong um, basically to everybody because everybody will be involved with the raising of children. Um, people will uh, be very involved with um, the arts, music, drama, visual arts. Um, and people will uh, spend a lot of time um, Simply.